Hapoora. In Tahitian, the word means great gathering. When Captain Cook arrived here in the mid-1700s, he found the natives to be warriors. He called it a great gathering of the fiercest fighters in Polynesia, and thus gave the island its name. Since then, the natives have taken up gentler pursuits. The island is a haven of relative tranquility. Its physical beauty and charm have inspired writers and artists through the centuries to create images of an island as close to paradise as any on earth. <laughs> Bora Bora has seven beautiful faces. As you travel around the island, you will see absolutely seven different shapes to it. And each place you go, you get a completely different view and look at the mountain. For me, artistically, it's a very important place because it's always the same, yet it is completely different. Bora Bora is an island of colors and images. And for Rosine Maison, it's an island of inspiration. Her artistic interest in Bora Bora is partly the result of her marriage to French artist Paul Maison, whose work brings to mind the paintings of Gauguin. After Maison's death several years ago, Rosine decided to remain on Bora Bora with her children. She remarried and opened an art gallery. I used to live out on the little island surrounding the main island with my husband and children, but I like it here now not just for my art, but because there is a doctor and school for the children, and the island is a warm and friendly place to live. There's no other island like Bora Bora. It's like a cathedral. There's a feeling, a spirit here that doesn't exist in any of the other islands. I've been here for 12 years, and I never get tired of it, and I don't think I ever leave. Well, it's one thing to capture an island artistically, and it's another to be captured by it, which is more often the case on Bora Bora. For centuries, sailors from all over the world have been captivated by the romance of Polynesia. For Australians Judy and Don Blaney, the captivation had to do with dwindling funds and around-the-world crews. That and Bora Bora's charms made it nearly impossible to leave. Though they fully intend to continue their voyage, they seem to be perfectly happy. Low on funds, high on Bora Bora. Why did you end up here at Bora Bora? Uh, what was it about the island that impressed you? The first thing that impressed us about it was that it was coming close to us after 16 <laughs> days at sea. No, the two peaks up, up, you can see up there behind us, are absolutely magnificent uh, with the low bit to contrast beside them. They're really strong and rugged and you often get clouds over the top of them. They're beautiful. Back in Australia, Don's a lawyer and Judy works for an advertising firm. Here on Bora Bora, their lives demand... Doing nothing, if you feel, feel like doing nothing, you don't have to do the tourist sort of trick to see anything if you don't feel like it, because you know that you've got no time limits. You, you don't have to leave tomorrow or the next day. Or, and that's really... That's just so different from a home life where you've got a nine-to-five job and... Uh, you throw away a watch for most of the time. You don't know what time it is. You don't know what day it is and what month. It doesn't really make much difference. All you're worrying about is maybe getting some more cash to buy another beer or some food. <laughs> Do you know what day of the week it is? Uh, Wednesday at Spaghetti Night here. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Could you live here for the rest of your days, Julie? I don't think for the rest of my days, but I think for a long time, yes, certainly. No, it's a great little island. Isn't it beautiful? To be sure, for the sailor and artist, Bora Bora is a fountain of images and romance, fixed on canvas and in memory as an island of timeless beauty and serenity. But Bora Bora hasn't escaped the 20th century, and it has begun to slowly change. Bora Bora means the, uh, you know, the volcano eruption, the noise of the eruption of the volcano, the Bora Bora. That's the meaning of the word the Bora Bora. One of the signs of development is the increase of tourism on Bora Bora, and Fredo Doom runs the only guide service. Though the island's history may never be the same, every day at 2 p.m., Fredo takes tourists through the past and present on Bora Bora. This is just a Marai, ancient temple. It's open-air temple, it's not a cover, you know. This is the stop 
Deus disse há 200 anos atrás. Quando os missionários vieram aqui, eles estavam. This ruin, Fredo explains, was a temple used for sacrifice of all kinds, animals, fish, and sometimes people. I was glad to see that some things had changed. <laughs> Family life is a priority for most residents of Bora Bora. For Fredo, his family comes before everything else. My wife, she's from the island. Yeah, she don't like Tahiti, that's why I have to stay here too. <laughs> that's the other reason. <laughs> the island and my wife. <laughs> But the traditional island values are beginning to change, and Fredo is not so sure. When I, I came to Bora Bora, uh, Look, nobody working except the, some school teacher, just a few, not, and we have one police and uh, one old nurse, and the rest of the people, they just do nothing. They, they just go fishing for themselves. They work in the coconut. Today, almost everybody wear a watch to go work. Do you think that's good? <laughs> well, make easy for people. They make money, but uh, they ruin their life. Yeah, the life be before us, you know, have plenty of time. They don't have much worry, you know. Today they have to work because they see te television, they see scooter, they're buying, and they have to pay so much a month. That's why now they have to work to, to pay all those, you know. But before they don't, well, they don't really need here, you know. It's, everything's beautiful here. The color of the water, the mountain, you know, is everything's beautiful in Bora Bora. In spite of whatever changes televisions and scooters may have brought here, the water is still as blue and clear as air, the mountain still as strong and beautiful as ever. Though the many faces of Bora Bora continue to change, the island remains the world's loveliest. Just ask any resident. We'll be right back with our PM Magazine departments.